instead, I, I want to start off by offering, I think, updates that are relevant to this health district. Um, and I typically start off by offering case information uh, for the three localities that this health district covers. Uh, this information can also be found at the VDH COVID-19 website. Uh, so as of 5 p.m. yesterday, which uh, is reflected in today's numbers, uh, Chesterfield County had 909 cases of COVID-19, uh, 68 hospitalizations, and 29 deaths. Colonial Heights had 73 cases, two hospitalizations, and seven deaths. Uh, Powhatan County had 23 cases, uh, no hospitalizations, and no deaths recorded to date. Um, some information I think that is, again, relevant to this health district. So as of this week, Battelle Critical Care Decontamination System set up operations at the Chesterfield County Fairgrounds. Uh, this is one of three systems that are being set up in Virginia and are now operational. The other locations are in Blacksburg, as well as Newport News, and uh, it provides a, an extremely important service in that it uh, addresses the critical shortage of PPE, personal protective equipment that we are experiencing in the Commonwealth, as well as across the United States. Uh, the system um, essentially cleans N95 masks uh, using a hydrogen peroxide vapor to decontaminate them. Uh, providing then these masks uh, to go back in circulation uh, for our area healthcare workers and first responders. Uh, in addition to that, yesterday the Chesterfield Health District hosted the first of four free COVID-19 testing sites. Um, that one was at the Greenlay Mobile Home Park in Chesterfield County. Testing was for individuals who have COVID-19 symptoms um, and it was intended to be for folks who uh, are otherwise have limited healthcare access. So uh, specifically for those who are underinsured or uninsured. Uh, we had Spanish speaking staff on site uh, as we will continue to do so at our future events. Uh, yesterday we administered 82 tests uh, out of 100 that we had available. Um, and that included both pre-registered individuals, as well as those who uh, were not registered and walked up to the site. Uh, we anticipate having results back uh, very soon uh, over the weekend. Um, and staff, health district staff, will be contacting all of those who had been tested uh, with their results next week. This includes both positive as well as negative results. The individuals who tested positive um, will be given additional guidance, uh, as well as certainly information and education about COVID-19. Uh, the guidance will be specific to self-voluntary uh, quarantine, uh, which is one of the, the measures that we are taking uh, to reduce uh, the potential for exposure to other individuals. Uh, one of the things that we do ask of individuals who test positive is to uh, help us understand uh, uh, those who they might have been in contact with so we can in turn in, inform them about potential exposure to COVID-19. Um, so as part of this continued statewide push to increase testing, we will be hosting our second testing location tomorrow, uh, Friday, May 15th from 9 a.m. to noon at uh, the Bellwood Flea Market in the eastern part of the county. Um, Telephone registration filled up this morning. However, there will be a limited number of test kits available on site for those who didn't pre-register, um, but those supplies are expected to be used up by 11 a.m. We have two more testing events planned uh, for May so far, both of which are intended again for individuals who are underinsured or non-insured. Um, the, the other criteria is that these are for individuals who are symptomatic. They will be at the following locations. So on Wednesday, May 20th, uh, we will have a testing site open at the Ettrick Park Community Center. And then the following week, Wednesday, May 27th, 
we will have a site open at the Stonebridge Recreational Center. Um, so for those who are, again, symptomatic uh, and who fall into that group of under uninsured, we ask that they call uh, the Chesterfield Health Department at area code 804-318-8207 to register for an appointment. Again, there will be a limited number of walk-up appointments available as well. However, we strongly encourage pre-registration. Uh, this information will also be available on the Chesterfield County COVID-19 response page, uh, which can be found at chesterfield.gov uh, forward slash coronavirus. Um, for, for those of you in the media, we do want to protect and honor the privacy of those who are being tested and, and request that the media uh, not be present at the site. Uh, if you wish for more information, please feel free to contact the VDH PIO, the Central Region PIO. Uh, that information is available on the VDH website. Uh, in addition to that, I wanted to take some time um, to provide some more general information and guidance based on some of the questions that we're receiving from the public with regard to uh, phase one reopening of the Commonwealth set to begin tomorrow. Um, a fair number of these questions have to do, deal with uh, cloth, cloth face coverings, which are an important component uh, to the governor's plan for reopening. So, so with regard to cloth face coverings, um, they are intended to prevent the person who is wearing the covering from spreading respiratory droplets when talking, sneezing, or coughing. In other words, a person wearing the covering is protecting others nearby from themselves. The coverings aren't intended to protect you from others. The reason for recommending cloth face coverings is that some people can be infected with the virus and not show symptoms. Um, for example, I could currently be infected, not show symptoms for it, and potentially spread it to others who are within six feet of me, hence the strong recommendation that cloth face coverings be worn in public settings where other social distancing measures are hard to maintain, and, and those would include places where uh, you would could potentially be in close contact to others, such as uh, shopping, like grocery store, being in the pharmacy, etc. Um, the other piece here is if you wear them, they should be worn properly. And uh, to do so, the, the covering should cover the nose, mouth, and chin. Um, be sure that it's on tight, but not restrict breathing. It does also need to be washed regularly. And when wearing one, of course, don't put it around your forehead or around your neck. It should be over your face. The CDC website provides a lot of guidance as well as instructions about how to put one on and how to, to clean one. Uh, children younger than two should not wear a face covering because of concerns that it might suffer, suffocate. There were questions uh, with regard to the use of face covering on children in playgrounds. Uh, my advice would be that if your child is small enough that social distancing simply is not possible for them, it's probably a good idea to refrain from going into places where there are close contact with other children like playgrounds for the time being. Uh, however, other children certainly, again, if you can uh, stress uh, the importance of uh, wearing cloth face coverings and maintaining social distance, um, it should be fine to, to, to play on playgrounds. Um, and another important uh, issue that I think is worth mentioning is uh, something that we are noticing um, with respect to public health data relevant to vaccinations, and it's that many children aren't being brought into their health care providers to receive their vaccinations according to schedule. There has been a, uh, a reduction in our records of vaccinations being administered according to schedule. And this is very likely uh, due to concerns about contracting COVID-19 while at their physician's office. Um, I want to stress the importance of maintaining an adequate vaccination schedule per CDC and BDH guidance to ensure that your kids are best protected against vaccine preventable diseases. My advice would be to call your pediatrician or healthcare provider 
and ask about whether they have separate clinics uh, for children who are simply coming in for routine checks. Um, and many of them do. They have clinics for those who are sick, as well as, again, for those who are coming in for routine visits like vaccinations. Um, I think the last thing to note, uh, again, with reference to the reopening is that certainly there are understandably a lot of hesitations um, uh, as we reopen. Um, the key thing is, uh, per the governor's instructions, to follow the guidelines, maintain adequate social distancing. There are a number of other uh, regulations as well as best practices that are outlined on uh, the uh, Virginia government, uh, Virginia state government website. Um, the thing to note, however, is that we will expect to see an increase in cases for a number of two reasons, one of which is that we are attempting to provide and conduct additional testing throughout the Commonwealth, and more cases are secondary to testing, um, and the fact is that there will be additional exposures as people come together. Um, so with that, uh, as an opening pre preamble, I am available for, for questions. Uh, Rich Grissett, Chesterfield Observer. Uh, one of the things that's come to light in recent days is uh, Virginia's antibody testing and including that in the overall testing figures. Um, if you go back through the, the table that was put out by the Department of Health uh, today, um, it really seems that that only started up in the last three or four weeks, the including of these antibody testing figures. Um, do you know the reasoning behind VAH's inclusion of that and how those uh, tests impact Chesterfield's numbers? So Rich, I am not uh, probably the best source of information for that in for that detail. I think the Office of Epidemiology at the Virginia Department of Health can provide a uh, more specific reference. I do know that at least what we report through the health department, meaning my staff, are test results that come from PCR testing. Uh, this is the test swabs that are administered. Um, Antibody testing is serology, that is a blood-based test. Uh, we, we, at least the information that's filtered through us is not that. So uh, I, again, I, I think the best source of clarification and, and any sort of parsing of data would come from the Office of Epidemiology. Gotcha, so, so to clarify, the figures that um, are provided on the website in, in relation to Chesterfield, as far as you know, those are just the PCR numbers? That is correct. Gotcha. So, um, in the past two weeks, Chesterfield's numbers have nearly doubled. In the past month, they've nearly quadrupled. Yeah. Um, at the same time, tomorrow, places like uh, Chesterfield Town Center are about to open up. I guess, uh, you know, is, is there reason to worry about this, um, the opening up of things, while we're still seeing an increase in uh, test results for positive in the county? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I think part of it certainly is this issue of increased testing as well. Um, and, you know, I, I think the trends, you, if, you're, if you're looking specifically at, say, new case counts that are being provided at the locality level, um, what, what we are seeing are sort of a, a, a reasonable increase um, with some bumps that uh, are accounted for some of the ways that data is coming in and the processing times required to be able to manage that data. So what I, what I can't really say is that I'm seeing an alarming trend. Um, I think we simply have to continue monitoring the numbers over time. Um, I think more globally, these numbers are being fit into uh, regional um, assessments of risk to the public at large, um, which, you know, again, I don't believe are setting off any alarm bells. Um, so you know, my, you know, my short answer to that is, I think we simply have to continue to, to watch and um, monitor trends over the next week to two weeks. Um, Serena Moreno, Richmond Times Dispatch. I, so, so within the Richmond region, including Richmond and Tenrico, uh, Chesterfield has the most unreported cases in terms of ethnicity, despite having the highest number of Hispanic residents in the area. Yeah. Why is that, and what's being done to reduce the amount of ethnicity cases not reported to fully understand the impact on Hispanic residents Yeah, that's, there? A, that's a really good question. And I think that's something that we are internally trying to work on. 
A part of that is simply um, a, a capacity issue. You know, as we have more cases coming in, we have limited staff to be able to process that. Um, we have folks who are dedicated to the data parsing piece. It's not an easy process. It typically involves contacting individuals directly and asking, from, asking them for ethnicity information um, and then separately recording that. So um, we, we are working on ramping up that capacity to be able to provide that data in a more timely and efficient manner. Know that Hispanic people are more inversely impacted um, than than their white counterparts. How is Chesterfield kind of prioritizing those more vulnerable populations? Yeah. You know, in reference to the Latino community or Black community. Sure, those are very good questions as well. I, um, the four testing sites that I mentioned earlier are in zip codes that we have noticed an increased number of cases, and they actually happen to overlap areas of socioeconomic vulnerability. Um, so consequently, you know, the, 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 the populations who uh, you mentioned are individuals who uh, we trust will be able to have greater access to testing that way. Um, so that's one of the ways that we're doing it. Um, and I think we're going to continue to kind of expand opportunities to pursue that in the future. I'll start with your last question first. So the, um, it's called the Battelle Critical Care Decontamination System, uh, which is essentially a processing facility. It's probably a little bit more glamorous in terms of the terminology I use, but basically an equipment, equipment used to decontaminate N95 masks. Uh, and these are masks that are, are intended for healthcare workers, healthcare providers. Um, it is, uh, so we, we do have one here at the Chesterfield County Fairgrounds. There is another one at, um, in Blacksburg. And the final one is in Newport News. So there are three of those facilities in the state of Virginia. And it's called the Battelle Decontamination? Battelle, B-A-T-T-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Critical Care Decontamination System. And Governor Northam, uh, his office also put out a news release about all three of the critical care decontamination systems that you can find on his uh, website. And so with reference to your second question, um, the four testing sites, uh, the one that was conduct conducted yesterday was at Greenlay Mobile Home Park, uh, which is on the Jeff Davis Corridor. The one tomorrow is at the Bellwood Flea Market um, on the Jeff Davis Corridor. The one on Wednesday, May 20th is at the Ettrick Park Community Center in Ettrick. And then the one on May 27th is in the Stonebridge Recreational Center, which is in the northeastern part of Chesterfield County. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, yes, yeah, sorry. I can't 
speak specifically to the county itself. My understanding is their lights are green. Um, you know, as far again from a public health perspective, uh, I, I am not overly concerned based on the, the data that we have. Uh, again, it is going to be kind of a watchful monitoring uh, process as we move forward. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Um, as you know, we, um, we will be sending out a media advisory uh, for any future uh, briefings. Thank you so much.